Hey everyone! So last week we covered off on Wemet Canyon as well as Eagle Canyon and finished off with a zipline ride. In this week's video, we'll show you Kekabeka Falls. We'll also say thank you and goodbye to some special friends in Thunder Bay as we head out to Winnipeg, Manitoba. Thunder Bay. What did you think of Thunder Bay? Thunder Bay was amazing. Um, a lot of hidden gems in there. Highly recommend anybody visiting it. It it not only has beautiful sceneries with Lake Superior and canyons and all that kind of stuff, but a very very rich history. Yeah, actually, it was uh, it was surprising, and you know we were fortunate enough to um, to know somebody, a local person there, who kind of steered us and directed us in certain directions, which was great because that's really you know what we set out to do in any city that we'll visit rather than hitting up all the regular tourist destinations we like to kind of get behind the scenes and um, we we were pleasantly surprised by how much we were able to see by Thunder Bay um, the other significant part about this is on, on our full-time adventure um, even Thunder Bay included some people that we knew and were familiar with and we were good friends with um, leaving Thunder Bay meant we were going to be completely alone now and meeting new people and making new friends along this adventure. So let's, that, let's focus on the being alone part. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> no friends or family, just the two of us. You yeah. know, we get a lot of people that ask us, how do we do it? How do we live in such tight quarters together? Well, now we're also adding a component, an element to not only us living together in this rig, but we have nowhere to go or no people to go see and run off to and and so um, yeah I guess in, in a sense this was this was going to be uh, interesting and a little scary a little nerve-wracking but also exciting at the same time yeah so another great uh, scenic place to visit while you're in the Thunder Bay area and this one had been recommended to us by many people we were receiving Facebook messages as well as uh, emails and texts and that we needed to visit Kekebeka Falls um, and boy were we happy we did. This was another Ontario Provincial Park destination by the way. Uh, we'll link Kekebeka Falls below also. Yeah so um, for people who are unfamiliar Kekebeka Falls is actually uh, the Niagara of the North. Um, it's the second highest waterfall in Ontario at 40 meters high, whether is Niagara Falls is 51 meters high. So when you think of it in that perspective, it's not that much uh, bigger. You know, Niagara Falls is not that much bigger. Of course, they're much grander in a sense, uh, but Kekka Bucket Falls is definitely a beautiful, beautiful place to visit and an awe of nature. There's also a great legend attached to Kekebeka Falls, and it's about the uh, Princess Green Mantle who sacrificed her life to save her village. Um, I suggest you guys look it up. It's really uh, informative and great information. I like that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, so we'll make sure we link everything below so that you guys can find out more about Kekebeka Falls. But it is a beautiful place. Highly recommend people visit it. If there are destinations in Thunder Bay that we have not been to, not seen, not referenced in our videos and you feel that we should have, please drop us a comment below and let us know where those destinations are and maybe we can uh, recap or do something with that in the future. So the one thing that you guys don't really see much of uh, when you know we're showing our videos and stuff is that Jill and I actually travel with two dogs. We have two miniature schnauzers, Doc and Molly, and uh, they are 13 and 12 so they're getting up in age uh, they're a little slower at stuff and, <laughs> and, and sometimes difficult uh, difficult in the, in the they have difficulty time getting around and that kind of stuff so um, yeah so we don't show them much but I think we're gonna start a little bit more uh, including them in our videos because they are a big part of, of who we are and and they are a big decision factor on who we, where we go and how long we're gone and all that kind of stuff. So um, just to kind of introduce you a little bit, here's a, a quick clip of Molly. She has a fear of feathers. And For some strange reason. Bird feathers? Um, she, she's, uh, yeah, I don't know if it's fear or she just wants to attack. Yeah, 
so we're, we're not sure why that is but here I got her on video the other day and uh, there was a feather in the yard. We want to take this opportunity to also thank our friend Rachel White. Um, we've mentioned her a couple times already, but really our, our stay in Thunder Bay would not have been what it was uh, if it wasn't in part to you know, her kindness and her generosity. Uh, so thank you Rachel for everything that you've done for us in, during that time. Another special thank you goes out to Brenda. Brenda was uh, kind enough to offer her property for us to stay on. And we had an opportunity to speak with Brenda. Sorry for the low audio, but uh, we did a little one-on-one -on -one interview with Brenda, so take a look. First of all, we want to thank you very much for coming, for letting us stay here. It was really appreciated. And uh, how's it been? Great. Yeah? Yes, and I appreciate all the work you guys have done. <laughs> Holy man. Godsend. Yeah? Yes. I really enjoy it. Well, you have a wonderful place, and we're very happy that we were able to park here. Oh. And it's been a lot of fun. Yeah, I'm glad, you know. Hey, you pass by again, maybe sometime. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah. yeah, it's funny how, you know, within a week, things changed completely, eh? Well, this is it, eh? Because usually I do everything, and it takes me a couple of days to do my grass and everything, eh? So, uh, I keep every once in a while, I keep saying, God, send me somebody. <laughs> <laughs> and then we and just showed up. Well, this is it. So yeah. it, worked, it worked out great. Yeah, it worked out for you, it worked out for us. We got a place to stay, and you got, you know, we got the trees cut and all that kind of stuff. Yes. So, yeah. yeah, that's great. Yeah, we really appreciate everything that you've done. It's been amazing. Well, I appreciate your help, too. This is Molly, absolutely petrified that we are leaving her behind. She saw the baskets go in the truck, now she knows we're leaving, and she just wants to get to the truck now. All right, so now we've, uh, we've left Thunder Bay. Um, we've got about a 600 kilometer uh, stretch of road ahead of us. We decided to split that in two, we stopped off in Dryden. And um, from Dryden on is where things got a little interesting. So how many of you have a GPS story? A GPS fail? Um, I, I've already, I'm in that camp already. I've already had some experiences. Thought I knew better. I thought I knew, you know, anyway. There was um, an alternate route off of the Trans-Canada Highway 1 that not only my GPS, but also Google, and Apple Maps were both recommending that I take to get us into Beausajou, Manitoba. And this was um, Highway 44, just, a, just as soon as you cross over into the Manito Manitoba border. So I thought, eh. Didn't we also have a discussion on whether you were gonna take that one or not? Yeah, we debated and, and we thought, you know, it's gonna save us, what was it, 40 minutes or something like that. And three pieces of technology were telling us that this road was going to be fine, so we took it. <laughs> it wasn't fine. <laughs> it was. Uh, it didn't take long. Also, there was a the, the, the first thirty-ish kilometer stretch on this road. Uh, there was actually a warning sign that said it was going to be extremely rough, and it was extremely rough. It was also very narrow. There were no shoulders, and nowhere could we pull off or get off the road. Yeah, like there Once was no way to turn around. We were committed. So we traveled for a little over 30 kilometers at about 30 kilometers per hour, and it was painful. So then we pull into uh, this beautiful campground, um, and <coughs> Jill, you know, we decide, we, you know, find out where the site's gonna be, and we're all excited because it's a, on the river, yep. right? So it's on the river, and we're all excited, and. Jill starts, you know, with the truck, and all of a sudden he realizes, okay, this is a really tight spot. Really tight spot. And, uh, <clears throat> so he starts backing it up, and I'm in the back trying to video um, and focusing on videoing and not really focusing on what I should be focusing on, and all of a sudden we hear. Now she can hear the scratching at the back. I couldn't hear it that much because I was dealing with scratching at the front because the truck was scraping against trees 
to my right as I was trying to angle the rig into its spot. So uh, we definitely stopped. I took a moment to assess the situation, decided to make some alterations to the landscape, <laughs> trim some branches. We did, certainly didn't want to puncture our roof uh, or scratch the side of the rig any more than it might already be. And so we did a little trimming. We got our rig in its spot, got it leveled, got it hooked up. And of course, like we often like to do, lit a fire, had a few laughs about our trip across, and enjoyed the rest of our evening. Yeah. Thank you so much for watching. We really appreciate you being here. Um, give us a thumbs up if you feel like it. Uh, subscribe if you're not. Leave us a comment below. Uh, any suggestions, any recommendations, anything you'd like to see, or if you have any questions about anything that was shown in this video, we'd love to hear your comments. And we'll see you again next week. See you next week, guys.